Hey guys, welcome back. Today is exactly one week from when we started the paint booth assembly. And real quick, um, kind of off subject, if you want to help support the Nitro Auto Lab movement, please visit www.nitroautolab.com and shoot us a message and copy you guys one of these Nitro Auto Lab hoodies. Got the big emblem on the back. Now, women's hoodies will have the big emblem on the chest and a little Nitro emblem right there now if you guys want a t-shirt same thing as the hoodie got the nitro on the the back and the smaller one on the front now the t-shirts are $19.99 and the hoodies are $39.99 so shoot us a message get your nitro auto lab hoodie now updates on the spray booth now to remind you guys this is exactly one week after the day we started assembly you can see we do have the intake box up and pre-filters we do have our lights installed, two on the side, three on the ceiling inside. Let's see our intake filters and the glass for the lights. I want to show you guys the light fixture install. It gives you two light clips per light and a piece of glass. Now you insert the glass and then the light fixture itself and then the two clips. Now it gives you two per light, so we went centered. You could go kitty corner of each other but it would probably kick out the opposite ends. Um, I'm not sure what they intend you to use to seal the light to the glass, but um, they don't give you anything. The foam seal that they give you is for the doors. So we actually went to a friend of mine's canopy shop and we got some, it's hard to see, but some foam tape, some three quarter inch foam tape, and we foam taped the perimeter of the window opening, and then we laid the glass in, and then we put the light fixture in. And then we mounted it down with the two light clips. Now, realistically, if you want to get crazy, I would think if you make more clips, putting four clips in each corner would probably be the most ideal. Now, just with the two clips alone, you can see it's a pretty sturdy fit, but it's not perfect. Let me show you guys on the inside. You can actually push the glass so we are going to have to do some sort of caulking around the glass at the end. We do have the man door on. The man door is mounted by self-tapping tech screws. And uh, we just kind of shimmed it up with some paint mixing sticks to get our door gaps right. And uh, as soon as we were pretty happy, we went ahead and sunk the screws in. Now it gives you a little latch that kind of works both ways. As you can see now one of the things is this latch if you mount it either center or towards the outside this metal is kind of flimsy so it might not have the support and it probably end up bending so we mounted it as close to this bend right here that they used on the brake that they did on the brake um, to give it the most support to stay sturdy now and then we just kind of lined up this latch and sunk it in. So you can see there, it works pretty well. The holes are already pre-drilled for the handle. Um, the holes on the handle aren't exactly quarter inch. So you can force the screws or drill out the holes bigger, but the screws that they gave you are not deep enough. They're only half inch. So you can either switch to a three quarter to a one inch screw or do what I did and went to the hardware store and I actually got some countersunk Phillips head screws to use. Now I could only do it on one side. I chose the inside to give the inside the nicest look. But when I was there in my head, I kind of thought there was only two screws. So I only got two. And then when I got here, I was like, oh my gosh, there's actually four. So that's why I just have them in the corners for now. But I am going to go back to the hardware store and pick up two more. Now, you don't need to do that, but there you go. Now inside the door reveal, we did put a rubber seal now this rubber seal did not come with the spray booth guys that rubber seal i had to go to my friend's canopy shop and it's a single bulb rubber seal made by trim lock and i'll show you guys that in a little bit but i did a one piece seal i started down there and i did a 45 degree cut and i went up here and i did another pie cut and another pie cut 
and another pie cut. And that made it to where I have one seal, no breaks, and uh, to give me the best seal. Now, I believe this door could have a little bit of a tweak in it from shipping or just the way it was made. Um, but it does look like we could probably bend it pretty easy. But one thing I noticed is even after the seal and the install door, it compresses really good all the way around both sides even down there on the floor it seals pretty good but you can notice right here to here there is a little bit of a gap now if i pull it really tight it seals up now it could be because we could shim the door out here to let it close more but i believe that we might be able to just put a little bow on this door and get the seal pretty good when the exhaust fan is on, it should pull a little tighter probably, but probably not. So we will probably just end up putting a little bit of a tweak on the door and we'll be just fine. If we're worried about it, we could put a little foam seal right there on the door and it would help seal it up. And there's the tacky filter intake grid. All filters are included on the spray booth. It gives you a set of tacky filters for in there and then a set of tacky filters for the pre-filters. Now they don't really give you the best instructions, but you can refer to the photos of the blueprint as well as Google images of other spray booths. You can see we did put the wiring aimed upwards because we're gonna have the conduit go upwards into little electrical boxes. Now we got the first two lights with the wiring aiming towards the exhaust side, the lower ones aiming up, but the last one's actually aiming this way We'll put a junction box right there and we'll go up over the roof. That way we can run it to the switch and tap into the existing wiring. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see a little black seal. That's the foam tape that I went and got at the canopy shop. Now it does not come with that seal. I do not know what they intend or suggest using. I didn't give them a call, but you could give them a call or Use your best judgment on what to use as far as um, getting a good seal on that glass. Maybe you guys know a better way. I think a couple more light clips would probably help hold it better, but I don't think anything's perfect. So it is going to end up needing some either clear silicone or some white caulking or something. But you could do a pretty good job. You'll probably want to tape off the glass and do a pretty good job caulking. So we'll show you guys that later. Here is um, an example of the rubber seal that we used around the man door entrance. Um, this was the little piece that I had cut off. Actually, I just broke it, but this is the piece that I cut off to try doing a pie cut for around the window. And it just was a little too much in the window, so we did go with our foam tape. But you can see that this is the single bulb seal that compresses and it's rubber. It's pretty high quality. Now, we went to our friend's canopy shop and he was able to hook us up with a roll of that seal now here is the brand it's called trim lock ink and you can find them at trimlock.com so and this is a single bulb seal and this is a hundred foot roll now that's way more than we need so we'll have lots of extra they also give you a 10 foot roll of rubber and they intend this to be on the bottom of your door, either on the inside or the outside, I'm not sure yet. And they give you two metal strips here to help sandwich the rubber seal. So we'll show more of that when we get there. You can still see we got a bunch of tech screws left to mount the doors with. And I've kind of decided that the tech screws will probably be fine because they looked so good on the man door entrance that I'm thinking they'll actually be just fine on this door. Now, if I ever disassemble this spray booth and move to a new building, um, chances are those holes may be a little bit stripped out or worn out and the tech screws might not be the best answer after that. So you could either use another screw that doesn't have the self-drilling tip on it, or you could do some rib nuts or plus nuts and set those in the holes and then use bolts washers and lock washers to mount the door. Now that's just thinking ahead. Back to our little work table here. Um, guys, this is the foam tape that they give you. 
Now, they intend you to use this around the door openings, and uh, I think this stuff is just garbage. So, honestly, throw that in the garbage. I mean, you can see that this is just gonna not last even if, uh, maybe six months. I mean, if you're using this booth professionally, this is gonna have to go in the garbage. So, get rid of that, guys. We went to our friend's canopy shop, and we were able to get some foam tape. Now, I'm sure you guys could get this at your local hardware store. Um, otherwise, you could probably go to a canopy shop if there's one near you. Otherwise, you could search online, but this is some really nice foam tape. It's a lot more heavy duty, it's sticky on one side, and that's what we use to go around all the window openings. Now, Friday before I left the shop, I did unwrap the drive-in doors. They are very heavy. Um, one thing we did notice as a test fit real quick, we did make sure our door opening was square and even exactly from bottom, center, and top. One thing we did notice is our header panel has a little bit of a dip in the center. It doesn't necessarily dip, but our concrete isn't exactly the best. So it does have a little bit of a wave in it and these big long doors kind of reveal that. So we are gonna probably loosen up a few bolts up here in this area. And we're gonna try to use our port of power and like maybe a two by four board. And we're gonna try to see if we can't shove this header panel even up, even if we can just get 3 16 of an inch movement upwards on this header panel just give us a little more gap in the center i think we'll be able to square up our door opening pretty good and we'll probably put that single bulb seal one cut with the pie cuts in the corner exactly right there here is the drive-in doors latch now it's just like the one that you guys saw in the man door but larger so i can't compress it with my fingers very easily so there it is guys another thing that's in here is this pulley that bolts on to the motor and that will be what drives the two belts to drive the large fan. This is just some mounting plates and stuff that was included with the booth fan. And you can see a little picture there on the instructions that have the motor mounted on top. Now the motor is still upstairs in our storage, but we're getting ready to pull that out and we'll be mounting that on the fan shortly this week. Now the fan is up there. We used about three guys to help lift up while two guys stood up there and pulled the fan up. Um, and here is a little shot of the fan breakdown before we threw it up. All right, here's the Dayton 30 inch exhaust fan. Um, we just took it out of the box. It's definitely a big piece, very well built. This was included in the paint booth kit. This is a mounting plate for the drive motor. And then down there, there's a tube, which you can kind of see right here. That's where it allows two drive belts from the motor to go around the, the pulley on the motor through there. And then there's a pulley for the fan, which will initially spin the fan. Now I got to crawl up there later today, guys, but the fan isn't bolted down yet, but I am going to pull this exhaust housing back and bolt the fan up. And then I can permanently set the exhaust housing to the wall and anchor it to the floor as well and we can get the panel filters in as well as a panel filter grates now it does include a box of those here is the exhaust grid grates it gives you a bunch of these to help hold the exhaust filters in guys here are the floor anchors that we use to anchor this to the floor we had to use a quarter inch drill bit on a roto hammer to drill the concrete and drill through the panels and then we just hammered these quarter inch anchors into the ground and then we used the impact to draw them up which sets the anchor tight in the concrete and then mounts the booth to the floor now make sure it's all square and measure twice and drill once guys now i did about two anchors per panel um, a couple spots my concrete was loose so there it is again it's a little bit dirty guys you can see there and uh, this is one floor piece here. So I did just do one on each side or, or one right here. I didn't do one on each side of the panel. I didn't think there was a point, but if I'm worried about it, I can add more. Otherwise, we're gonna do some caulking on the floor that will help seal it as well. All right, guys, um, that's it today. I don't know how much time I'll actually get to work on the spray booth today. Um, I might have to wait till tomorrow. I am gonna have an extra hand here tomorrow to help probably get those booth doors on 
and uh, so we might not do much today but I'll be giving you guys updates as we go and if you guys can please go support Nitro Auto Lab and shoot us a message on our website and cop you guys a hoodie they're $39.99 as well as the tees those are $19.99 and the hoodies on the back have the Nitro now the women's hoodies have the Nitro Auto Lab on across the chest so and then a little nitro on the hoodie so they're a little bit different same thing but if you guys could please go cop some merch i'd appreciate the support and uh we'll see you guys on the next one thanks bye